Redis. It's a pretty hot topic right now. And licensing and branding aside, it's pretty useful. But how do you use Redis within Laravel? Are there multiple ways to use it? Let's take a look and then we'll do some code to see exactly how to use Redis with Laravel. Now we're not gonna be diving into the specifics of how to set up Redis on your local machine to be used with Laravel, but we are gonna be diving into how do you use Redis? How do you write the code to use Redis as a key value store and as a caching database? So I would advise looking at the Laravel documentation, the Redis page for that, for specifics on how to set up Redis on your local machine, as well as the Redis documentation. Now, one thing to know is you can use multiple databases within Laravel. So even if you're using Redis outside of caching for something like a key value store, which we're going to take a look at the specifics on how to do that in a little bit, you can also use multiple Redis connections within a single Laravel application. So this is useful if you have one connection that is going to be used for caching and another connection that is going to be used for a key value quick database. While Redis is largely used as a cache or session driver, you might have a specific use case in mind for an in-memory database like Redis, where you can use the examples that we're gonna be going over for that particular use case. Additionally, Laravel allows you to set up Redis as its queue driver as well. For this demo application, we're gonna be taking a look at what a live application dashboard might look like to a bunch of different active users across your social media platform. So we wanna show active stats in real time or as close to real time as possible. Now this polling that is happening right here is just using live wire poll option. So the wire colon poll directive. And then that's just a signifier to kind of show the amount of traffic that a certain website could have. Now, every time that this is updating, we don't want to have to make a database call. Ideally, we'd love to pull from the cache first and then maybe just update the cache every 60 seconds. So what does this look like in the code? And then how can we change this to use Redis to cache these options? So we have a live wire volt component and this with function up here is basically just saying anytime the component reloads, we're going to return this information. In this case, specific database count queries for user, for active users, and then for discussions. Now we're just using this wire pull directive to signify and kind of show if a bunch of different users were accessing this page all at once, how would that affect our queries? Well they're going to be very expensive because not only do we have to serve up that request to the user, but now we also have to make that expensive database query to just get the count. Well, this cache is going to be the best way to do that within Redis. So let's take a look at how we can implement that. Okay, now grabbing the user count, adding it to the cache, and then using that anytime we load this live wire component is going to be fairly simple. We can just say we want this user count uh, to be part of the cache and we're just going to say remember and we're going to say um, we'll just call this uh, user count. Now we can set this to 60 seconds and then the return function is going to be what this should pull from once those 60 seconds have expired. In this case, we're just going to return the user count. Now that's what we're using down here. So now we can just pass along the user count variable. And it's as simple as that. Now we have this item in the cache and it's going to be updated every 60 seconds. I'm gonna zoom in real quick so you can see this, but what you're seeing here is the cache item that we created, Laravel database user count, and Laravel's doing this naming behind the scenes. We just specified that user dash count variable, and that TTL there at the end is how long until this has expired. I'm going to run PHP artisan new user, which just says, hey, give me a new user. Now the cache hasn't exactly expired yet. So we're not going to see that new user reflected for another 60 seconds. One minute later. And there you can see that cache was deleted and we pulled the new number in. Now this is where Redis caches can be incredibly valuable. 
you might not need the up-to-date information every single time a user requests that information from the page. But now you have an easy way of saying, when has that cache expired and when do I need to pull additional information? Now, what if we want to use Redis for something outside of cache or queues or our session driver, which Laravel provides for us out of the box. We just have to set it up in our environment variables. For example, session driver, this would be Redis. We could have the Redis client um, set here, and then we would just have um, any kind of cache store would be Redis instead of database and queue connection, Redis. But what if we wanted to do something as simple as grab a specific variable from the database and display it somewhere or set a specific variable from the database. Now this is a key value database, which means it needs to be unique keys. But if it's something that we're easily just setting and grabbing, this is how you would do that in Laravel. Let's open up our set Redis Laravel live wire component and we just have a uh, stored value. Now this is where we can get a specific variable from our Redis store. We want to get foo. Well, foo doesn't exist because if I was to del delete this stored value variable, we have nothing. So how can we set something? Well, let's go ahead and bring that back. We're just going to set this to an initial string and maybe we'll just set up a um, input here where we're going to say, actually, let's go ahead and set it up and down here where we want an input with that's wire modeled to the stored value. And we'll just go ahead and kind of divvy out some classes for that. Okay, testing one, two. Now we don't have a button or anything to kind of set this variable. So we're going to go ahead and input that in here. We're just going to say, um, First off, we want to close that off. Now we want a button that just says um, add stored value. Perfect. And we add some classes to make this look a little bit prettier. Okay, not the prettiest, but if we want to um, then call this, we can say a wire click um, add stored value. And why don't we create that function here? So public function, add stored value, and we can set the Reddit variable foo to the stored value that we're creating here. So if I was to type, I'm going to refresh this just in case if I was to type um, a new one, store it. Great, we have this being stored in Redis. You can see here that's actually setting as a new database um, where we have data Laravel database foo, a new one, which is a string, and there's no expiration date for this particular stored value. If I was to change this, then we have that same value being retrieved. Refresh, and we don't have the variable anymore. Let's see what happened. Okay, ah, that's why, because we're storing, we're setting the stored value on the width, with this, which is Reddit git. But what we actually want is this stored value. Let's see what that looks like. This stored value. There we go. Perfect. So now we're storing the value with this wire modeled input. And we're pulling that value from the Redis getter as well. Again, this is a key value pair. So that value needs to be unique in your Redis database. Laravel gives you some nifty ways to connect to Redis, whether that's cache, session drivers, or a queue driver. But additionally, you can use Redis's git and set values within your Laravel live wire components or just Laravel itself to be able to get and set key value pairs and use them within your application. So now you have a fast way of storing these settings in memory in a particular database like Redis. Oh,